Today we're talking about demographics, why they matter and how they can help us predict the long-term success or failure of a country. I'm Flynn from Offshore in Asia. We help people move, do business and invest in Southeast Asia. As investors, demographics can help us gain a better understanding of the markets we invest in. They're a good predictor of long-term success. It's worth noting that the impact of demographic changes are very slow. Therefore, it's in terms of decades, not years that we're looking at when we discuss this. This is very relevant to younger investors and people looking for generational wealth because the markets you invest in now are going to look very different in 30 to 40 years time. The median age of a country is one of the most important demographic statistics and could show how young or old a country is. This is important because younger countries often experience higher GDP growth as they have a younger working population. They also tend to be less developed countries as low income families have more children and less women are educated or in the workforce. Conversely, countries with a high median age tend to be more developed and have more stable, strong economies. With this stability and maturity comes lower tax revenues as people enter retirement ages and a high reliance on social security with aged pensions and healthcare often being overburdened in these nations. This isn't the full picture of course, not every low income country is experiencing fast growth and not every young country is a low income country. Israel is one of them as an example. A lot of these younger frontier and emerging markets do experience challenges with corruption, nepotism and mismanagement. This is commonly seen in Sub-Saharan Africa as well as Laos, East Timor and New Guinea. Furthermore, a lot more of these old countries are more mature and have more stable stock markets, real estate markets and that is why the bulk of investments all over the world go into these countries because it is more stable. The burden of an aging population is going to be felt more and more across the West as time progresses and towards the latter half of the century we're going to be facing serious challenges in many of our economies. The old age dependency ratio is a very telling factor of this. What the age dependency ratio tells us is how many working age people that will be to provide for each pensioner. Many countries in the West as well as China are going to be experiencing age dependency ratios of around 50%. This is huge and what this means is that for every pensioner there's going to be two working age people providing for them. Just think of the amount of money that's going to be required to pay for that and that's all going to have to come from taxation. And when the working age population of your country is reducing and the retirement age is increasing, the problem's only exacerbated over time. This is a moral issue because there really isn't much that can be done other than increase the fertility rate and increase immigration into a country. This leads into the next issue which is as the voting base becomes older, politicians pander to those people more so pensions will remain the same if not increase. The two main things that can be done to increase fertility rate is encourage young people to have children which means diverting social welfare towards younger families and increasing immigration. Two things that are less popular with older people and that is another challenge the West constantly faces. This is most evident in Japan with their falling fertility rate. The government really has found nothing they can do to stop this. One of the solutions is to bring younger working immigrants into the country. However, this hasn't been popular with the Japanese public and there really isn't any viable solution at this point other than giving more social programs to help more people have children. It might look like I'm blaming retirees for a lot of these problems and I'm not. It should be up to Western governments to help integrate older people into the economy, help them with volunteering, work, give them work opportunities. If they don't want to retire, they shouldn't have to retire. The crux of the issue is declining productivity as this population ages and stops working. Then one of the other solutions is to keep older people working if they want to work. And that's why the governments need to be encouraging people to keep working, have incentives and programs to keep people in the workforce for longer. Southeast Asia is a completely different story. With a median age of 30, it's one of the youngest regions in the world eight years younger than the US, China and Australia with their median ages sitting around 38. That gap is set to increase too with the fertility rates in Southeast Asia sitting above 2.1%, that being the natural rate needed to replace population. This sits in stark contrast to the West where the fertility rates well below 1.5 births per woman. Regions such as the EU and Japan are suffering the most from these low fertility rates and rising median ages with the median age of Japan being 48, some 18 years greater than Southeast Asia. The Philippines, Laos and Cambodia all have average ages of around 25, making them some of the youngest places in the world outside of Sub-Saharan Africa. Long term, this shows that Southeast Asia, particularly its emerging and frontier markets, are going to experience higher economic growth than other regions of the world due to their favorable demographic outlooks. These young countries are going to experience higher productivity, innovation and tax revenue, leading to higher GDP growth and better economic outlooks in future. This presents an exciting opportunity to those willing to invest in the long-term future of these current emerging markets.